You know, Batman had his Batmobile, and we have our Eggmobile. Um, and the idea here is, again, we're looking at nature's template and saying, well, before Pfizer and Johnson and Johnson and Merck Pharmaceuticals, how did nature preserve? How did nature sanitize behind herbivores? Birds. You know, the egret on the rhino's nose, the birds that follow the, 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 the um, Cape buffalo in Botswana, uh, any nature program when you see the wildebeest on the Serengeti, there are all these huge flocks of birds, right? And they're flying down and they're, you know, picking through the cow patty, or the cow, the wild, whatever, the manure. And, um, and, and they're eating out the, the parasites and, and bugs and spreading the manure out. So tra taking that page out of nature's template, um, we have the eggmobiles. There's 800 layers there in the two eggmobiles. And uh, we move them every couple of days, and they're following the cows. So the cows, the cows have grazed how many, Eric? Five, five paddocks here in this field? Four paddocks. Five paddocks. On their fifth paddock. Okay, so that means they were here four days ago. All right? And, um, and so the, the fly cycle is four days, roughly. Okay, so uh, we moved the eggmobiles in behind the cows. So the cows were here, and then they were there, there, and there, moved up through the field. Moved the eggmobiles strategically behind the cows, and the chickens then go out, scratch through the cow patties, eat out the fly larva. That's what pays their salary to do this work, see? <laughs> and, and, of course, during the summer, when it heats up, there will also be now newly exposed crickets, grasshoppers, and, and other, you know, bugs that, that live down in the, in the grass that the grazing cows uh, expose, and the chickens then can go and harvest that. They spread the cow patties. You know how a cow pie comes out? Uh, you know, you can tell a lot by the herd, by the way your uh, cow pies look as to whether the herd is being uh, fed correctly. You know, if the cow pies are sheet cake, <laughs> that means the feed is too rich and they're not getting enough roughage. You need to slow your rotation down to let the grass become more mature because they're, all they're getting is candy bar stuff. Okay, and off all you ate was candy bars, you'd get the squirts too. <laughs> all right, if it comes out in what we call cookies, little cookies, then it's too rough, it's too coarse, and they need a little bit of, of uh, tender stuff, you know, to, to, to make it better. All right, what you want is a pumpkin pie. <laughs> round, round, a little bit, you know, uh, up on the edges, and right in the middle is this little lip thing, you know, where they squeeze the last bit off. <laughs> go to that pumpkin pie and they take that thing that might be you know 12 inches in diameter and by the time they're done with it they've covered about five square feet with that thing now suddenly you don't have you know a, a soil a soil bellyache from ugh, too much stuff now you don't have a bitter zone that the cows won't graze next time and you've spread that that uh, fertilizer out in the field and makes it makes it much more even than in a uh, another a system not like that. And again, now the chickens are not just for laying eggs; they are now co-laborers, team players in this great land healing ministry. See, so it totally changes the whole relationship emotionally, spiritually, functionally, and profitably with the animals that we're doing and it really uh, functionally it, it, it significantly changes it so now instead of having to put the cows up and 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 uh put them through the head gate and shoot them up with grubicides and parasiticides we just collect thousands of dollars worth of eggs <laughs> as a byproduct of the pasture sanitation system suddenly ecology and economics can be synergistic rather than conflicting
Okay? Questions? Breeds. Anything at all? Breeds. Excuse me. What breeds? Breeds. Good question. Breeds. Okay. Uh, the, the, the layers, we use non-hybrid old traditional American varieties. Barred Rocks, Rhode Island Reds, Black Astrolorps, New Hampshire's. Okay? We don't use any hybrids for the egg layers. Well, you say, well, why? Well, a couple of reasons. Um, one is that the non-hybrids are just a bigger bird, a bigger bodied bird. So when you're done with them, you have something you can eat. Okay. Um, number two, the main reason is that they are, uh, that they lay not quite, they, they lay a little, they don't lay as well. Uh, maybe 20 eggs a year fewer, which is just enough that their laying is does not overrun their body's um, what metabolic capacity to feed itself. Hybrid birds are uh, they lay so well that they actually overrun their body's metabolic capacity to keep up with the energy drain of that great big egg a day on a very small bodied bird. I mean, imagine if you weighed. Uh, you know, if you weighed uh, 125 pounds and you were lo and you had to eat to keep up with a loss of 15 pounds a day, boy, wouldn't you love that? <laughs> talk about talk about a weight loss program, huh? Talk about eating like a horse, <laughs> right? I mean, the fact is, it would be almost physically you, know, you physically could not do it you would gradually debilitate. And so what happens is these hybrid birds actually cannibalize their skeletons and bone structure to keep up with the calcium requirements to make eggshells because they're making them so prolifically. And so we think that it, it makes sense, uh, intuitive sense at least, um, to, to think that a bird that is not cannibalizing her body to keep up with production probably is packing a little more nutritional punch in that egg all right so uh so that's another reason another reason is the non-hybrids are more uh, uh robust and obviously we deal with weather issues and so we need that robust you know immune system and finally <clears throat> we don't have it out right now but um but in the in another couple of weeks we'll have them out in the feather netting which is the electrified netting which is not very high, keeps the coyotes out and the chickens in. Um, and we'll run another batch of birds. Uh, these are for pasture sanitation. The feather net is for pasture egg production. Two different goals, two different models for two different things. Anyway, the uh, heavier birds are not as agile and flighty. They're more docile. And so they tend to not fly over fences. They, they just tend to be uh, um, easier to con contain and control. Good question. That, that, that's why we use. Now, uh, that being said, I will tell you that it's a real problem because so few egg, uh, so few non-hybrid birds are being hatched now in the U.S. that we're having a terrible time trying to find enough pullets. When we order 200 pullets, we overrun the entire hatch in the country. And uh, it's a real nightmare trying to get birds. So for the first time this year, we're actually exploring the idea of hatching our own and creating our own. See, the other problem we're facing is that 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 even the good ones in the in, in, in out there, you know, the non-hybrids, the traditional birds are still being selected for egg production. Well, you can't you can't just generation after generation after generation select for one trait without compromising other traits, and we're losing. We're losing our robustness, forageability, and brains. And believe me, a chicken needs all the brains she can get. She doesn't have a great big one to start with. And so, uh, and so we think that if we could breed a bird for aggressive grazing and for brains, in a couple of years, we could really have a, a functional pasture-based chicken. Okay? Uh, question, yes. Uh, on that netting, I saw in one of your videos you had a battery on a hand cart. Where do you use it to charge that battery to keep the net? Yeah, the batteries on the energizers that we use, 
Um, like, like down somewhere here is an energizer that's running the cow. Uh, we, I saw it. It's right over there. Okay, that, that's running the cows right there. Yeah. Um, we just have a, a battery charger in the shop, and we have a shelf, and we just have, you know, we just have a, an in and out in and out deal and just rotate them through why don't we you know the next question is going to be why don't you use solar chargers <laughs> <laughs> because we like solar no no problem with solar chargers but they are about 250 dollars to have the panel that runs the energizer and it is very fragile and we have a lot of interns and apprentices and help <laughs> <laughs> that sometimes does not understand that when you head off 40 miles an hour down through a field with a four-wheeler, it might bounce. <laughs> and when that solar panel bounces <laughs> and falls on the ground, you have just lost $250. And a battery is a little bit tougher. <laughs> and so we don't use the solar charger. Yeah. How long of a run can you get with effective charge out of a car battery? Like, you know, when you're doing your... Like, like your this battery, right here? Yeah, like how, how long of a run can you get out of 10 that miles. battery? 10 miles. Is that effective charge? Oh, yeah. Wow. For how yeah. many days? Well, I mean, it all depends on the jewels sure. of the energizer you get. Yeah. And I can tell you right now, um, you don't ever want to get an energizer from, uh, you know, Tractor Supply or... Farm Bureau or whatever, uh, the only good energizers in the world are made in New Zealand. They're Speed Rights, Speed Rights, um, uh, Gallagher, um, Pell, uh, Twin Mountain. There's about there's about the only four that are made anywhere. So uh, like an Interstate Marine battery wouldn't wouldn't do you. Oh yeah yeah no no I'm not talking about the battery I'm okay. talking about the energizer. Oh yeah sure okay. The battery runs the energizer. The, the, the electric fence energizer. Yeah, no, no, battery's fine. Battery anywhere is fine. Okay. Uh, it's the energizer. You want, you want, that you know, you want uh, uh, 1.2 to 1.5 joules of power. Uh, you don't want to run one that's, you know, just running half, half a joule of power, which a lot of these little cheapos down at the farm store are. They just don't generate the, the joules of power. One more question. We're going to call it a day. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I was reading in one of your books that you discovered it was in fact illegal for you to give paid tours of your farm. How did you end up getting around that? Uh, the question is, is it illegal to give paid tours of our farm? It's still illegal, nothing's changed, and it's all illegal. <laughs> <laughs> and we, and we just, see, when we started this, we, we did it for free. But what happened was, we tried it the first year all free. Um, what we... You know, we used to try to accommodate everything, and, and, and about, whatever, five, six, seven years ago, one week, I realized all I had done all week was just take people around the farm. I said, we just can't do this. I mean, we, we just can't do it. So we said, well, let, let, let's schedule tours, and then we can lump them together and, and do it. So we did that the first year, didn't charge a penny. It was all free. The problem was we had 20, we had 70% uh, no-shows. People would sign up. Didn't have any skin in the game, and so I'd be out here. On, I, I, I'd hook two wagons together, go out here, and, you know, take my time. We'd all get together to do the tour and have 30 people. Well, how can we get people to show up that have signed up? You know, because, well, you know, we didn't we didn't want to oversign. You know, then we're gonna. Can you imagine? You know, then then of course the very time we oversign, we'd be in the airlines. You know, we have oversold situation. You know, and uh, who wants to get so? Anyway, so so then we started charging what we think is a very conservative amount to put a little bit of skin in the game so that when you sign up you're actually here and that has worked extremely well and 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 that's the only reason i would do this for free but it, we had to do that i mean people are funny i mean all of us are funny you know uh and so you know you, you live and learn and you you know you do what you can and you, you try to make it happen Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna formally dismiss you here because I know I won't get you back after this. Feel free to walk to the Eggmobile. Feel free to go to, to the Racking House and see the rabbits and the chickens. The Brooder House where the little chicks are. You can uh, poke your nose in the hoop houses there and see that. Go into sales building. That's fine. But we really uh, honor and appreciate your taking the time and commitment to come and spend 
an afternoon on a on a dreary uh, April freezing cold after I've just come from Florida for four days um, day with us and we really are honored and appreciated that, that you come and hope you'll come back bring your family back bring your friends back assume that this is your farm we're open uh, and, and transparent here there are no no trespassing signs and we really want you to, um, to to feel like this is a part of your farm so now may all of your carrots grow long and straight may all of your radishes be large and not pithy may the coyotes be struck blind at your, at your pastured poultry. May all of your culinary experiments be palatable. May the rain fall gently on your fields. The wind be always at your back. Your children rise up and call you blessed. May we all make the world a better place than we found it. Thank you.